Welcome to another patho video. Today we discuss the risk factors for getting a UTI. Certain things increase the risk for urinary tract exposure to microbes, being sexually active, lack of personal hygiene, and urinary catheterizations are all examples that increase exposure of pathogens to the urinary tract. Urinary tract infections typically spread in an ascending manner from the urethra to the bladder, up in the ureters, and potentially even to the kidneys. Two types of reflux cause urine to flow the wrong direction, increasing the risk for UTI. Urethrovesical reflux may occur when there is a transient rise in intra-abdominal pressure as with sneezing or squatting. This forces urine out of the bladder and into the urethra, which contains bacteria. When the intra-abdominal pressure is taken away, the now bacteria-contaminated urine refluxes back into the bladder from the urethra, where it can seed the bladder with bacteria for infection. With vesico-urinal reflux, there is a backflow of urine from the bladder into the ureter. The reflux could propel the bacteria up the ureters to the kidney, increasing the risk of pyelonephritis. Normally, the ureters insert into the bladder at a steep angle, creating a mucosal flap or valve that maintains one-way urine flow. Vesico-ureteral reflux occurs with an anatomical defect, where the ureter inserts into the bladder more horizontally, so the flap is not created, allowing for reflux of urine back up into the kidney. With diabetes, elevated blood glucose contributes to bacteriuria. When blood glucose levels exceed 300, the kidneys are unable to reabsorb all the filtered glucose. The glucose that is not reabsorbed remains in the filtrate. This is called glycosuria. Bacteria now have a food source, and this promotes their colonization in the urinary tract. Neurogenic bladder may result in spastic or flaccid activity of the smooth detrusor muscle in the bladder wall, which may manifest as urge incontinence or urinary retention respectively. In cases of urinary retention, the lack of washout increases risk of UTI. Common causes for neurogenic bladder include spinal cord injury and stroke. As mentioned, patients with urinary catheters have an increased risk of de developing UTIs. E. coli or other bacteria may adhere to the surface of an indwelling catheter using their fimbriae. The catheter serves as a point of entry through which E. coli gains access to the bladder. Having entered the bladder, E. coli adheres to the surfaces of epithelial cells lining the bladder wall and initiates formation of biofilms, a slimy layer made of microbial products. Biofilm formation allows the bacteria to more readily survive in the urinary tract and cause UTIs. Extracellular matrices of biofilms provide resistance to host defenses and antibiotic treatments. For women, estrogen decline, which is typically related to menopause, can cause thinning of mucous membranes, increasing the risk for infection. Other risk factors include spermicidal birth control, which may kill normal flora like lactobacillus acidophilus, and conditions that lead to incomplete bladder emptying, which compromise the washout phenomenon. For men, prostatitis and benign prosthetic hyperplasia increase risk by blocking urine outflow. The elderly have decreased immune function and tend to be more dehydrated, which increases the risk. Kidney stones block the normal flow of urine, compromising the washout phenomenon. Reflex causes urine to flow the wrong direction. Diabetes increases glucose in the urine, giving pathogenic organisms an additional food source. Neurogenic bladder doesn't allow the bladder to empty properly, increasing residual urine, which compromises the washout. Instrumentation like catheterization allows bacteria to enter the urinary tract. Now for a question. Pause the video and think of your answer. If you answered C, you are correct. Thanks for watching.